G'day folks. Well, I thought I'd do a bit more of an explanation on the Battenfeld uh, injection moulding machine, also known predominantly as an over-moulder, designed for moulding ends over things like cables, that sort of stuff. Uh, moulded end plugs for, say, your single-phase power plugs in Australia. Most of those would be done on a similar machine. Um, a few people are asking me just what it does. I think even Alex is having trouble wrapping his head around how it works and... Uh, Essentially, all, it, all an injection moulding machine does, I'm not going into blow moulding or rotor moulding, any of that stuff. Might do that later if I can find an extruder or a, um, a blow moulder or something to scrap. But injection moulding is essentially what its name implies. It injects material into a mould and you get a part that pops out or is ejected by that. That's an ejector. A little hydraulic ram with a pin that you can fit into it push the uh, ejectors. Uh, I don't have a die with an ejector plate or anything on it but well my metalworking table over there is made out of an ejector plate for a lawnmower deck die. It's been cut in half and turned into two tables. I didn't get the sister table to it but I got that one. Uh, that's from a very big die. These ones are obviously a lot smaller. The plate would probably be a fairly small footprint. Uh, but all it does is squirt well, sorry, let's go from the start. Close, clamp, squirt, open, eject. Then, in this case, the guard would come up. This one's had a hole cut in it, so it's not oh &S approved anymore. But the uh, guard would come up, you take the part out. Uh, if you're over moulding onto a cable or something, you would lay a substrate containing the pins, like the three pins on, I'm trying to find one say on a power plug like that the white material around the outside is a substrate that holds the pins in place and it extends back into the plug like if you put this under a bandsaw and cut it in half you'll find a mixture of wire and white plastic amongst the black but you'd lay that in the die with the lead going out through a, a, gr a gap in the cavity and then the die closes over it and injects, injects material into the remaining space and air just bleeds out through little air bleed holes or gaps um, that sort of thing vents they're called it bleeds out through vents and that's essentially what you get you can also do regular moldings on this thing you just have to have an operator handy to grab them or a robot arm that comes in grabs picks up and drops it that sort of thing maybe if, the, if they're ejected far off far enough off the die you could have a floating air nozzle at the side of the die just to blow it out the door essentially you can put a part spin on a stand at an angle and just have an air nozzle blow it out the door but chances are if it doesn't come off it's going to close with that part in there and throw up a, a mold protection alert and you'll have to uh, stop the cycle and clear it restart the machine so on um, this thing does have pretty complicated mold detect mold protection systems so it does detect the uh, clamp pressure going up before the die is at its monitored close position it will know that there is an obstruction uh, some mold protection systems are so good it would know if your finger was in there and throw up an alert before any serious damage is done uh, more ancient machines you basically lose the finger <laughs> it wouldn't be pretty uh, but these ones are pretty good and that's sort of why I'm going to keep the control in one piece and sell it as a spare part because the panel and everything's in really good nick. It's too good to uh, fully dismantle or pilfer for parts. I mean, most of the parts I'll never use. But anyway, enough on that. Um, yeah, injection moulding is just what its name implies. You inject into the mould, material cools very quickly, and you eject the part. The moulds can be water-cooled, depending on the material. If you're moulding polypropylene or polyethylene or ABS, styrene, uh, polycarbonate mixtures, blends, that sort of stuff. The dye, the melt temperatures aren't all that high, but the dye is cooled from co chilled water from a chiller or a cooling tower. This one had a uh, small cooling tower on it. But if you're doing something like glass filled nylon, or in this case PVC, the dye was actually heated to a predetermined temperature. So you had to have the temperature up and stable at a set temperature. I don't know what it was, but some dyes you do have to preheat. Some of them you have to get pretty hot because you're injecting material at extremely high temperature. 
it comes out like lava and it burns horribly if you get sprayed with it it's really bad so some some plastic materials can be molded at really low temps like this one here is about 90 90 to 100 degrees celsius at least in one of the zones i've tried to pull it up on the control but i haven't studied it enough but it's a very soft pvc compound and it run, it melts at very low temperature so the heat bands were low heat generated from the screw also melts it too but uh, if you go into something like uh, polycarbonate you can make really thin polycarb mouldings but you've got to get it up like 300 degrees or something so it's like water and uh, yeah so melts and all that sort of thing if you want to learn more about that you might as well just start studying injection moulding or just plastics engineering in general uh, there's you could spend years studying it and becoming a master at it and it's a pretty good pretty good industry there's certainly still an industry for it in australia it's just limited uh, anyway tooling wise this is the remains of the old tool i've put tape over the important bits mainly the company logo but that's the only part of the tool that I have. I don't know where the rest of it is. It's at work somewhere. But as you can see, this was mounted on a shuttle system where everything moved back and forth on a shuttle table. You had a core and a holding unit for the uh, material to come in here to be over molded. That's raw material. That's molding in there. So raw material comes in in pairs, both sides. Uh, in this ca the case of these sprues, they're blanked off, so I'm guessing it was only running one side for a while. But it's injecting material over the ends, and then the operator has to remove it after it's come back on the shuttle table. I, I never even saw it running. Like I maybe maybe it had been at the company 12 months before they retired it, and I honestly never even bothered going over there to see it when I should have. <laughs> but yeah. It was in another department, so let's just say that. It was in another department. I never worked on it. I never operated it. I didn't even understand much about it until I actually looked at it and said, oh, this is just basically an injection moulding machine. We always just used to call it the over-moulder. And until now, I didn't really know what it was. So, yeah, that's a tool. Good example of a tool or die, mould, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is a sprue it, or runner. Um, they break off, cut off, usually just fall off if it's gated properly. Uh, gate being that. If it's got a blind gate where the gate comes in below the surface of the die, it'll shear off as the die opens and pulls the parts out. So this just drops out in the box as it is. In this case, it's not blind gated, so the sprue comes out attached to the moulded pieces and you've got to actually physically rip it off as an operator. That's a sprue bush, that's a sprue that there is technically the runner and these little bits down here are the gates those tiny little openings and that's where the material flows in fills the cavity out under thousands of psi of pressure cools very quickly and voila if conditions are right and everything's programmed and set right you get a perfect part come out if things aren't right your temperatures aren't right you can get shorting you can get burnt material if the temperatures are too high um, if the clamp force isn't high enough, you can get flashing, like material squeezing out between the surfaces, between the cores. Um, if your pressures are too low, too high, you can push your um, push it out through here or wherever. Um, even with your clamp force right, if your injection pressure is too high or too fast, you can still spit it out the sides. Um, yeah, there's millions of different things to study in the injection moulding. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to learn it all, but. Again, it takes a long time, at least for someone like me, to learn every bit of it. I don't learn things first time every time, unfortunately, and it was getting a bit frustrating, but I still enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I'll have to go and visit my uh, old employer and just see if he's got a basic non-proprietary tool that I can uh, film in operation. That's the thing. A lot of the time, customers don't want people showing their tools because it's their product and they don't want someone overseas, particularly China, copying the idea. No one even knows what this is for and I've covered the most detail of it and it's still an obsolete shape for a current product, but I don't know, if work has a problem with it, I can pull the video, but they're not really going to give a shit. They've already let me show the extruder, just not the finishing part of it where everything does become proprietary. Anyway, um... As far as the rest of the system goes, I'll give you more detail when I just keep pulling bits off it 
for tonight I'm going to work out how to get this all the way down to the bottom of its travel which isn't that far I think it only has 200 mil of travel so it won't come down far enough to hit these the uh, tie bar clamps for the injection unit if it does I'll simply unbolt them and uh, work on just let, let the uh, injection unit sit there on some timbers because that's going to come off separately after that I don't want all that weight missing when I've got all this weight on the front I just don't want the thing wobbling around and carrying on so I'll probably end up taking all that off move it back as far as I can and just let it sit on timbers and it can stay there until I'm done separating the injection unit which will involve having to cut down there across there and the same on the other side and unbolt there and just get rid of this front frame and sort of pick it up on an angle I'll run chains through the platen bottom and top once they're closed and bolted together clamped together and just try and lift the whole thing up high enough to clear the drain tank down there and roll it out of the way on the crane not particularly hard just time consuming that's all it's sort of why I wished I'd started dismantling this thing earlier but I just had to try and power it up eh? not worth the effort nor the money to try and hire a generator when I don't have the rest of the shuttle table or the uh, I've got the proc sensors I just don't know where to hook them up and I don't know the sequence because the shuttle table has to move and trigger certain proc sensors at certain times I think and if you don't get that sequence right the machine will not run and I don't even want to know what its little brain thinks about safety uh, bypasses it'll probably lock me out or something if I try and tamper with it too much it's a smart system like I said before they're smart and it can be quite hard to just turn one into a rudimentary press when it's monitoring its closed position all the time it's monitoring pressures that sort of stuff if I just shoved a random object in there and told it to clamp over it it would just have a complete shit fit it just won't do it so yeah anyway enough rambling for now you sort of get the idea of what I was saying about molding parts spruce bushes that sort of thing when I get to pulling the injection unit apart I'll explain and show how it feeds and melts the material in here this is the business end really you got motors and rams and things in there for thrusting the screw forward or moving the uh, whole injection unit back that sort of thing but the business goes on in here when it comes to melting material from there to there essentially the screw extends a little further back to the motor but that's the business of melting material right in that little unit anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoy it I know it's not the most steady or detailed video but it is the middle of the week and I'm basically just doing this before I go inside I've got too many projects on the go and something to organize for this weekend involving cars so yeah more coming up all I can that's all I can say thanks for watching